mean, you know, a lot of people are looking for technical references when they come come on this kind of show, and the opening <laughs> window shot is Ray doing the old uh, magic. <laughs> <in the fire. laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Way. Yeah, that's the wonderful action that you've had years of practice of, and uh, that we've come to know and love. And obviously Ryan, who's had massive success with the fingers <laughs> at the end of the <laughs> Into, have I mentioned that Lachlan Adair fast as fuck mention that mm. well thanks guys yeah. so Christmas and New Year's and has anybody got like the Christmas and New Year come downs anybody got a bit of a blue because I noticed that Uh-oh. obviously Ryan's mind wasn't on the job because mm. everybody's got their you know it's your on except Ryan who'll never miss the opportunity to plug pound for pound you get your pound for pound <laughs> <laughs> by going to Ryan Blue Boeing's channel and you two can, can buy a shirt as well just like that one that he's got on which is not <laughs> <a> bit, but, <laughs> yeah. oh, so we shit. should probably intro the show get this mother fluffer rolling ladies and gentlemen welcome to the fix now I'm going to check in legitimately one more time with our technical director Rolly uh, what, what is this Sorry, guys, my intern. Oh, the technical director. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Perfect. Use for the technical director. What, 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 what episode are we thinking here, right? Um, what is it? Forty fifth, forty five, or or something like that. Okay, well, it's forty five, forty five, forty five. You know what? Yeah. I've been waiting for this episode, lads, because that's one of the numbers that you can do in Dart's voice. So let's go with that again. 45. <laughs> One more time. Episode 45. 45. <laughs> Professional darts call number. Episode 45 of The Fix, ladies and gents. Three people in fixed shirts. Ryan Boyne in a pound for pound shirt. Has anybody got <laughs> any stories that happened over New Year? Because I've got one. Pretty serious situation, right? Okay. Check this out. Me and my lads, we go sledging. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> okay. So me and my lads go sledging. Uh, Tobogganing, do you call that where you are, Ray? Sledging to us, son, but you know, you guys over there, you know, I don't know what you refer to it as. Sledding. 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 Well, it's no what geez, Christmas it. does. He's just got reindeers to pull him. We just do it down steep hills, as you know. Often on car bonnets. But on this occasion, no car bonnets available, so I did it on a sledge. Anyway, we go over there, and this guy walks past us, right? And uh, he looks really kitted out. We th- we have quite a bit of equipment, but this lad had much more equipment. And this is like the day before New Year's Eve. And he walks over, and he says, yeah. I says, you going up to the tower yourself? He said, yeah, all the way up, mate. All the way. Tower's like five miles further up, right, you've got to climb up some, like, mountain sides and so on to get up to where he's going to sledge. We are on some pretty steep slopes, but this guy's obviously big time. He's really going for it. Anyway, we thought nothing of it. We carried on our day sledging, had a great, great time, got a few nice runs in. <laughs> Came back, went home, enjoyed New Year. Anyway, yesterday, right, I find out on the local news that this guy... While he was up there, snowed heavily, and he was in what, you know, a whiteout, yeah? He he was involved in a whiteout. Couldn't see Mm. anything, couldn't find anything, got seriously lost up there. As luck would have it, he managed to find, like, a little cave open up there in between some big boulders coming down off the hillside, and he stayed in there. What is that, like, five days in this kind of temperature? 
to be perfectly honest, guys, he might have died up there. But for the fact that in his backpack, he had some <laughs> Western Survivor beef jerky, mm. which happens to be the greatest beef jerky. Ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Western Survivor. And if you've not got any Western Survivor, ladies and gents, it goes well with whatever the, that is that raised is that milkshakes on? Fits <laughs> <laughs> as well with vanilla milkshake in Latvia. <laughs> For you Latvians out there, so get it in. Western Survivor. And remember, they've also been giving away the arm wrestling table, and I'm pretty sure they're going to do just another one. Out. Yeah, they just shut out. Like, yeah, he's really committed to this game. Adam Vandal, who owns Western Survivor, arm wrestler himself, and he's looking to give away another table soon, guys. So keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on www.westernsurvivor.ca for other advertising and information about when they're giving that next table away. But let's get into some arm wrestling action, ladies and gents. The shades can come off. It's time to... Get into the mix. Did any of you guys catch a lot of the... I mean, I know you all featured on there for a little bit of time, but did you catch a lot of the armathon? Were you guys... Uh, did you stay throughout a lot of it? I found myself doing that. Mm, I wish I did. I didn't, I didn't realise how big it was. Uh, I, I honestly wish I did. I think it would have been fantastic to see more. I, I did jump on a couple of times and see some faces that I thought, well, this is pretty cool. But no, at the times that I did jump on, it was like 2 a.m., so I was, I was falling asleep, so... Yeah. And yet, Ryan, you may have had the biggest, the biggest occurrence in the entire show might have been for yourself, mate, because you and Pradeep Singh <laughs> not necessarily the best friends in the game. Yeah, so yeah we, we got face to face. You're going around his house for next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed it. I missed it completely. I just I saw the videos. I turned it off. I didn't know you can. Yeah, no, no, Neil, on. Neil, Neil Neil saw Pradeep on and messaged me and said, "Hey, jump on. Here's your chance to have a chat with Pradeep face to face." How did that go? Man, How did it go, Ryan? I don't want to say anything bad about anyone because Pradeep just flat out apologized and said, "I'm sorry for manipulating truths," and uh, I won't do it again. It was great. <laughs> It was, it was it, to be fair, it's a really, really positive outcome. It's nice when something like that happens. It went as predicted. Uh, he had nothing really negative to say about Ryan when he went on there. And it was just iron flat, which is brilliant, you know. So it's a, it's a, it's something positive going into it's like, yeah, it's, it's It's funny getting face-to-face -face pe with people, even if it's not <laughs> actually in person, can, can solve some things. It did, you know? yeah, it did. It, it happened uh, behind the keyboard. Yeah. Now, an enormous amount happened over uh, Christmas and New Year, not all positive. Um, and for everybody out there who's a long-time fan of the sport of arm wrestling, we want to, myself and the lads, want to dedicate this particular show of The Fix to a very good friend of uh, certainly two of us on the call, uh, Jim Bryan, who unfortunately passed away uh, on New Year's Eve. Jim was a, a lifer in the sport. Um, he had a tremendous amount of success at the table, but I think he was more known for his character and character traits off the table. Um, really, really friendly guy, really approachable guy. And he was kind of a throwback. He was like got that hard outer edge on him, that exterior, you know, which was quite mm -hmm. funny. Um, but he loved the game. And back in the 90s, he was everywhere and anywhere. And he showed up in shape and was a really, really solid arm wrestler. Uh, I was really shocked and very upset to hear that he passed away and um really surprised me not not the type of individual that you thought would have would have uh, succumbed to to the virus and uh it's a massive shame i know you knew him pretty well paul also yeah yeah he's a guy that like if you're in the northeast where i'm at um if you haven't had a, one of your matches refed by jim bryan or if you hadn't been to a practice but uh you know hosted by him then you probably weren't getting out he operated one of the largest teams in the northeast there's two teams in new jersey there's beast no beast mode which is marcio barboza's and then there's there's his uh new team new jersey that he operates with uh with sean latimer and i mean they're they're one of the they're, they're very similar to morocco i mean they are like it is every i believe every saturday um constant at him and Sean or Sean's house, and they have a very large team. They show up with uh, their team shirts on and everything. Um, and he's a vet, was a very, very excellent technical arm wrestler. Um, 
I, I, I was blessed enough to work with him a couple times. Um, he, he had, he had come to us a couple times. He's gone to Maryland a couple times for, for small, uh, interactions with Morocco and myself. And then I had been to his house a couple times. Just an unbelievable dude. Like you said, throwback. Um, great teacher, but like that he's like that football coach that doesn't really have anything positive to say to you, even if you do it right. He's going to find, he's going to find what you did wrong and he's probably going to shit on you. Um, but you can tell it, it. And anybody who, anybody who, anyone who trained under him knows he was a hard ass like that, but wouldn't have it any other way because he gets you better. Yeah. Yeah. I just I kind of learned a lot from him. I, I just, I just had to, uh, I know a lot of people in the, in the, the arm wrestling community, but I didn't know Jim, but I just jumped on Facebook then whilst you guys are talking to, to get a visual on who this guy was and I, and I recognized him straight away as someone yeah. prominent. So, um, yeah, it, it hits, it hits you hard when you, when you start to know people in the community that, that are, that are passing away and as you get older, more and more happen. So yeah, condolences to everyone who, who's in Jim's family and important to him as well. Yeah, so our thoughts, um, everybody on the fix, our thoughts go out to, to Jim's uh, family and close friends um, at what I'm sure is an extremely difficult time. Um, we want to dedicate this, this show to Jim, um, fabulous arm wrestler, multiple US national champion, uh, world champion. I think his world title may have been in India or Egypt, uh, where's Engin when you need him? He would have told me that. Yeah. Um, but Nevertheless, a uh, fabulous arm wrestler, a good guy, and a great loss to the sport of arm wrestling, uh, Jim Bryan. Huge. Huge. Now, guys, um, over Christmas and New Year, we have seen things start to change. Obviously, we spoke at length about last year. The global sort of lay of the land for arm wrestling is changing because of what's happening mm-hmm. with COVID. And mm-hmm. massive, massive, massive news coming out of Dubai this week. Uh, Monster Michael Todd obviously now has moved out to Dubai he's going to be out there for three or four months training with Larry Wheels uh, which is a fabulous opportunity and one Mike is really well positioned to to sort of take advantage of uh, particularly as uh, Ray was unable to get out there and, and uh, do a great deal technically so Michael jumped on that rocket ship and he's going to ride it till it absolutely explodes and fills the sky with sparks. Now, when he got over there, I caught one of the live shows and it sounded like there was already uh, plans in place for Levana, Saganashvili, mm-hmm. to get over there very, very soon. A couple of weeks' time, I believe. Now, yeah, yeah. my understanding of that is, is that it's not going to be a, not going to be a match as such, not going to be a, a competitive match, but. You can almost feel the conversations <laughs> bubbling away straight off the bat, can't you? Because, you know, that's going to... It's, gonna be but, uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating psychological uh, little stuff that's going to happen. I mean, no doubt both of those guys want to know what the other one feels like, but yeah. you know, are they going to they, they fox with each other? Are they not going to touch each other's hands? Like, I can, I, I, can, I, I can see Michael's personality asking, say, Levan, 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 and Levan yes. saying, no, nah, no. Nah. And like, I don't know, like, who knows? I don't even know. But either way, I want to see it. <laughs> Whatever goes down. Yeah. I was trying to figure that out because is, is Levan big on social media? Not so much that I see. You know, you see the training. I mean, you know anything about that, Ray? Yeah. He's not really in pursuit of that, is he, no. mate? No, no, no. He's, he's, he's very popular in Georgia. Like, like, I, I believe in one of the superstars now, but, uh, he's not like, you know, posting stuff. No, 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 no. <clears throat> But I, I believe like Igor went there and they were scheduled for Levon to be there, but Levon couldn't make it. So yeah. either some COVID restrictions or something like that. So now I, I believe they just will reschedule and come back. And uh, I believe we will see a match. Uh, at <laughs> least one. I, I believe we will see a match. You know, I, lot, lot, will it be like the Devin and Michael Todd one? It'll be a deliberately low budget casual match. So that we depends. Dep- dep- I, I believe. I believe. Like, uh, if uh, Igor comes with his crew, you know, they will. Yeah. They will try to make uh, it a little bit just bigger. Do Ooh. Just do it. Just do it, guys. Don't oh. don't think about yeah. anything. Just do it. Yeah. I, I, I believe it will happen. If if they that will be a foolish move for both men, though. I think for yeah, them to sort of be, be cornered into it because I think just a little bit of sparring. To get the, to get tongs wagging and stuff like that would be really advantageous because even though it's just, you know, I'll have a little feel, it, you know, everybody's going to be like, oh, <laughs> everybody's eyeballs 
You know, it's like, whoa, when we get my fucking popcorn, <laughs> it is on! Right. Really, you can't not, can you? They just start looking around. You, somebody wants to see Levan's wrist just start yeah. to peel open, and all the Levan fans just want to see Levan go and just basketball slap the shit out of Mike. So, you know, <laughs> Mike's mum at home, when that happens, be like, Gah! you know, yeah. everybody the Mike hater. Hey, joking aside, though, you know, one of the coolest things, period, that I've seen recently is that Michael Todd is getting positivity. Yes, yep. yes, and yes. Mm, How yep. good is that? Mm. That's long overdue. Yes. That is long overdue. Because I said it before and I'll say it again. How can you not like Michael Todd? I don't care if you don't even, if you don't like Michael Todd as a man. How can you not like him as an, he's the friggin' embodiment of balls. Yeah. He's up for it. I mean, he will die to win. I think that's a, a really, really good trait for anybody to have in any sport. You know, I love to see that guy that will go above and beyond to win. And Mike's that tenfold, you know. So I think it's great that Mike's finally getting some positivity. And, um, yeah, long may that continue. I, 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 don't, I, I never believed that Michael was getting, like, hate. Mm, I believe it was just, desperation move. It was just, yeah, just the move, you know. And, and, and they, whenever they, they, he's on table and right. he wins in different way, everyone's like nice. And if he uses the king's move, everyone's like not nice. Well, it's one of those scenarios where he's owned it. You know, he's got his product lined out there with the king's yeah. move on it, and he's owned it, yeah. so he's made it himself. Um, and I, and I think that kind of has the correlation between the two. Has what is what kind of caused it. It's funny. Last time I talked to Michael on the phone. And I don't know if this is a secret or if it's going to happen or not, but he was talking about doing like a tour, like a U.S. tour in in support of anti-bullying, uh, being that even though he is the World Arm Wrestling Championship or champion by uh, hammer holder, and he still suffers from <laughs> online bullying. And it's, it's so true. It's a really so, good, a mean, really good point and a really good angle, and I think yeah. it'd serve a great purpose, to be honest. But I agree. The, th- the the thing that I think is going to be really good is that Michael's that guy that if you were, if anybody was given that opportunity, you'd you'd struggle to find somebody more befitting because he, if he gets his mindset on something, he doesn't muck about. He really goes for it a hundred and ten percent. So all the opportunities that come with that, whether it be him physically. Rebecca physically, whatever they set their minds on doing there, you know they'll they'll go balls out to achieve it. Mm. If it's the merchandise lines, the Monster Factory and everything that he's got going, um, exactly the same thing. Guys, go over, check out Monster Factory, Mike's uh, Mike's brand mm. over there. Really cool, actually. He's got yeah, a lot of going mind. in that area. And you, you know that he's going to ride that till the wheel falls off. But Ryan mentioned it on the last episode. You do get the feeling that... Because Mike's been such a lone wolf for, for a lot of his career, and we've seen the strides he's made since he started training with Corey, you get the feeling it could be sort of next level stuff for Mike, really reinvigorate his ass, and that is an interesting prospect. Yeah. You know? It, yeah, it'll I, be interesting I, I, I to see really, who comes back from Dubai. Yeah, I really think that this Dubai season will be uh, a chapter of Michael we've never seen before. I right. expect him to be the biggest, strongest, and I think Larry's going to have a lot to do with that. I think Michael's going to draw a yeah, lot of motivation from Larry. Yeah, he's going to draw a lot of motivation from him on not, not only not only the the YouTube side of thing, but just the, the strength side. Larry's such a good ambassador and, and example to follow in terms of how to be strong. And I think even just the mental strength that he will draw from training with Larry, I think mm-hmm. he's going to be believing in himself more than Michael's ever believed in himself before. And I think I think that. He couldn't be having a better prep. If he was the face of Levan in four months' time, that undoubtedly is the best Michael Todd that's ever walked the planet. I agree. I agree. I think like he's going to go stratospheric in like every aspect. I, I think you're going to see his socials blow up. I think. I think when he comes back from Dubai at the end of this year, I think Michael's going to be able to support himself off of his socials. I think that that's Easy. where. Yeah, Easy. and I. It, it's, it's beautiful to see it. I mean, where, where in the world do you, where, when would we have ever thought that, um, Michael Todd's socials would have, uh, transcended Travis Bajan's? I mean, not that Travis puts a whole lot into it, but personality wise, he's gonna, he's yeah. gonna pass him. Well, you, you, you watch, you watch Michael catch Devin even. I, I think like Devin oh. has been, Devin's been the leader, but 
Michael puts yeah. more effort into production. Rebecca puts such effort into production that Me. I, I think Rebecca's I, yeah, a I, beast. <laughs> I think that Michael is taking deadly seriously, and I think that they don't want to just be the world number one ranked arm wrestlers. They want to be the world's best arm wrestling channel too. Right, yeah. and that's the beauty of it because he's not doing it by himself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like Travis kind of needs Gary for that, and, but difference is Michael has his team at home, you know. And he's got somebody who's pretty technically versed, and and Rebecca is every bit as motivated as him. So it's, it's a team of two, and that's got to be huge. That's double. Mm. You bet yeah. your ass it is. Yeah, I, th- I think um, as I say, that the fa- the fact that they get sort of that um, obsessive compulsive angle going on, they both got that within them. I think it really can uh, lead to some positive stuff. And if Mike does get to that kind of level, which there's no reason at all that he shouldn't. Um, how cool is that to have a number of guys in the sport of arm wrestling that are full time professional and able to really support themselves from what they're doing on social media? I mean, at the moment we've 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 got a handful. We've got Devon, who I'm sure is in that position now. Yourself, Ryan, you're obviously a full time professional. Um, I think Gary Roberts is potentially a full time professional as well. At the game, he's doing just that, uh, but not many others, is there? Ray, Ray, you're, you're, you're uh, but Ray's not Ray? just from the socials though. Ray's a professional yeah. strength and conditioning right, coach right. as well, aren't you, mate? But yeah. I don't train. I don't <laughs> train anyone. No, I train. That, I train only o- online, and I train my armistice group. I don't train. I don't have clients. I'm yeah. full yeah. in armistice. Nothing else. So I mean, that's an interesting dog. point, Ray, because I've always, you know, I don't want to brag, but I think I'm a hell of a drummer, but I've no <laughs> drums. All sticks. <laughs> did, you know, coach, did you know Coach Ray is coaching Jordan Davis now? Or about to be? What is this with the Aussies all coming to Latvia? You've got friggin' Lachlan uh, Adair <laughs> going over to it's train the with source. the Jedi. It's the source. It's the <laughs> new <nuclear. laughs> I get my Latvian program secondhand from, from Lachlan. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to the building. I can't go directly to the source. I'm not connected, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Look, on, on, on New Year's Eve, we were over at the, uh, the president of the Australian Arm Wrestling Federation's house, and, and uh, Jordan was being all elusive, wouldn't tell me who his, who his new coach was, and, uh, and it turned out to be old Rolly. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are we are starting this week. Before that, it was just some tests and things like that. I I because he hasn't really trained. I, mm. He's been burning the candle all. at both ends. He's been, like, bring he's, him in. He's, dropped, you know. he's back down at eighty six kilos. And right, you just need to please just put some substance on that man in terms of base power, please. We lost Ray. Yeah. No, he's yeah. back, he's back. Yeah. 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 Right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I heard everything. What gave him away, Ryan? Right, yeah? What gave so, it yeah. away when you saw him? Did he just like walk into walk into the kitchen over there? <laughs> and uh so you, you just glanced glanced at his t shirt and you just saw you were like, Well, wait a minute, what's that incredibly stunning young man in a forest <laughs> on your shirt? Rolly? <laughs> 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 and he was like, "Yeah, you're damn right, it's Rolly. That's because that's who's training me. I'm all about so how long this. How long has this training been going on? Because I think the last Ryan Bone video I looked at, he was crushing everybody, oh, including oh, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's right, not Jordan started. Jordan. It's, it, it, it should okay. start today. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's the motivation. Ryan crushed him yeah. and put a video, no, I, a one-hour yeah, video, and like, beating him. <laughs> I feel I felt so strong the other day, and I feel so strong right now. I'm, I'm starting my taper towards my supermatric Ben Carroll. And I know Jordan Davis is flat at the moment. He's burning the candle both ends, as I said. But I went into that video and I said, I'm going to, I said in my head, I'm going to crush Jordan Davis today. And I, and I did. I, I, even outside of straps, he couldn't stop rolling me. I was, it was the, the happiest day of my life. What are you doing different to prepare for, for Ben Carroll, Ryan? Mm, I think that um, match is interesting. Yeah, that, that, that match. Uh, is I, in my opinion, it's my most difficult opponent I've ever drawn. Um, yeah, probably. Ben, is Ben's a friggin' <laughs> monster. Um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say it because I need to protect it. Right, right. Okay, okay. yeah, we can talk after. Do. But he can pull down his hand as well, which makes him more dangerous for you, doesn't yeah. it? Really, because yeah. you know you're gonna there, there's a. There's kind of a path you're going to have to go through. If he commits hard like we saw him in this lottie, yeah. then uh, yeah. if, that, if, if he does good. that, if he does that, I have to be very technically spot on to be able to deny that flop press. 
Um, if he has his wrist bent, he's the heavy favourite on uh, on unless I can hit him outside of his shoulder real quick. So the training I've been doing with Lachlan over the last eight weeks, really accelerating off the go, has given me a couple of tools that that I'll be looking to use. So yeah. Have you ever have you ever pulled a sort of uh, flopper? Can't believe I said that out loud. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the comments will light up now, won't they? They'll be like, yeah, actually, he has, Neil. Non-stop, motherfucker. Well, the, the, uh, joking aside, have you ever pulled like a, 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 a go-to flop wrist presser, Jerry Cataretti? Is there anybody over there not, that pulls that Not out? of, not of uh, strength that was comparative to myself, so I haven't had to really red line deal with it. Danny Tesh could flop very forcefully, but he never, never, went never went for it against me. Um, so, no, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. You can end up pulling guys who are capable of pulling with the wrist back, and it's very different to pulling someone who's, who's A1 moves. It's coming at you. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a really different That's, experience. It's, it's, it's scary. Different. It's scary. I, I pull, well, I, not, not at a high level, but I pulled some, some flop wrist guys who are 100% dedicated flop wrist. And, and if you're... It, it, it's a weird experience. I tried to go outside and I forced the hook. And as long as my, it's such a, like, I think that's what made Jerry so amazing. Like you don't want to, you don't want to hook Jerry. Like these people that Jerry's flopping, they don't want to hook him, you know, because mm. obviously if, you know, if you grab somebody low and you're able to turn them in and you have more inside, then, then what's the point of a flop? Um, but staying you outside against a dedicated flopper is tricky. Really is. If you get, if you tricky. got the inside, particularly a fast, Fast presser like that. If you if you get on the B side with somebody with that much power, yes. it's good night, Vienna. It's, done. it's so hard not to over rotate because they're forcing your rotation. Yes. Yeah. For, for me, the, the 100% critical thing is going to be to get him outside of your shelf line really right. early. Early. Really early. How is your how is your your sort of uh, supinating pressure? How have you got mm. really good ability to sort of cut him off it's his yes, shoulder? Yes, yes. It's become my ace. Uh, it's weird. weird. I have, I started out a pronation based offense where I, I feel more dangerous doing this now. I really do. Still, so. I thought you got hurt and sacked it off a little. I know you were going I, at it. I, like I, I, I busted my shoulder up, but my elbow and my hand. Elbow still good, is it? Yeah. So so it feels so good doing that. So how's the shoulder, Ryan? It's eighty uh, percent better than what it was. Eighty nice. percent back. So. Um, yeah, I have that's really good. That's good. That's daily good. daily work with range of motion, and, and and I still haven't gone heavy on my shoulders. All I do is I do dead hangs. I do all the I copy all of Giannis's washing the window stuff that he does, and um, and I'm just daily doing that, and and arm wrestling, and it's coming good. So, nice. have you got a t-shirt? In the works already, just with you pointing at your shoulder, and eighty percent better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that, mate. When when is the eight men in Brisbane shirt available? Because uh, it, it'll it'll come out the day that I do the video with Marcus. Marcus has promised me he will bring eight people that are phenomenal giants. So we'll make a video just tongue in cheek, and, I can't, and honestly, can't Pradeep Singh is gonna struggle not to make a video. He's gonna want it, but he promised me he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Pradeep, you gotta make one. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys are buddies. We... You've, got, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. And also, you got to you got to like really play to your strengths. Like get these guys, line them up, and just have Lachlan doing wind sprints behind them. Just... <laughs> I am speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rob in background racing sports. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute oh, quality, yeah. man. It is. Yeah. So it, it seems like there's only the UK that's locked down to the extent where there's absolutely no arm wrestling now. Because when I turn on the TV, there's still bits going on in the US, isn't there, Paul? You got you still, you know, yeah. some people. Oh yeah, yeah we're buy out. Doing We're stuff. doing stuff. It depends on the, the part of the country. I mean, if you go to Florida right now, it's like there is no coronavirus. Um, the population increase in Florida. People are moving there. There's no masks. There's no nothing. And uh, the ironic part about that is Pennsylvania has been shut down for extensive period of time um, on, on several several occasions, and the numbers in Florida are lower than ours. So uh, no figure. Um, but yeah, there's still stuff going on. There's some quote unquote underground stuff going on. I'll release a video of some practice challenge matches and stuff, some pretty decent matches. And 
I know there's a few other um, events that are going to pop up that aren't being heavily publicized, but are being talked talked about and uh, and uh, shopped around in in the inside networks. So people are still doing stuff in the Northeast and in the South. I mean, there's really no concern about it. And in Australia, Ryan, have you got <clears throat> complete mm, lockdown uh, now, or are you starting no, to come up there? I just put a video out yesterday, and the, one of the most common comments on there was, I guess coronavirus doesn't exist in Brisbane or something, because where every, everyone's hugging and shaking hands and spitting in each other's faces, basically, it's um, it, the state that I'm in, it's it's like it doesn't exist, and it's been that way for five months now. Um, well, like it couldn't been, possibly exist in Brisbane. I mean, it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, man, everybody has, has, hey, man. Everybody's naturally immune in Brisbane. There's at least eight guys that are in Brisbane. Hey, everybody, you've got anything in Brisbane. You've got to remember, you got, you got to remember it's, uh, we got summer, we got summer down here in the Southern Hemisphere, so the conditions for COVID are not, they're, they're hard. I mean, it's 40 degrees here today, so good luck spreading coughs and colds. It's not happening, so. Um, we're, we're, we're good. You guys are suffering through a winter up there at the moment, so much, much worse for you. Yeah. That's, that's, what about that for you, buddy? Any, oh, anything we're lock, lock, lockdown. Full lockdown. Full lockdown. Nothing. I thought you looked a little bit down, mate. In fact, your background, just the background, looks a little bit gloomy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hairs. Am I lying? Look at his background, lads. Yeah, hair's 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 fabulous. <laughs> nothing right. Yeah, he's fabulous, mate. There's nothing wrong with that haircut. Not letting anybody tell you any different. But uh, you know, if you look at Paul, let's do a contrast. Contrast and compare. All right, look at Paul. He's shrouded in light. Sorry. Lack of arm wrestling. Yeah. That is, guys. Lack of arm wrestling. Mm. Yeah, it soothes mm. the soul. But there's a lot to be cheerful about, because particularly if you're Alex Bozaikov, because I heard that he's passed a million subs. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, a million Amazing. subs, guys. Crazy. Arm wrestling. Arm wrestling mm. did mm. that. Crazy. Yeah. That's all awesome. very good. That's, that's, that's one for uh, for Eric's channel, isn't it? That's one for the uh, armwrestlingarchive.com right there. The first oh, yeah. arm wrestling channel to pass a million subs on YouTube. Holy shit. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Seriously? Mm, That's incredible. Yeah. I've, I've, always, I, I've always been curious where Alex takes that channel. Um, if like he's Obviously, he's got the resources behind the channel to, to, to choose from a lot of different, different directions. Um, mm. He's such a conservative, quiet guy and... Um, He's obviously just been playing the formula that has worked so far to keep it growing, but I've always been wondering. I've always thought there's going to be a moment where I bet you he turns something on, whether it's a promotion or, or I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I just keep on thinking yeah. so, something from arm wrestling TV is going to bang out and be a major, major thing in arm wrestling. Like, yeah, it, it's going to be big when he decides to turn something on. Well, I think it's amazing. I think the content that he puts out and the continual growth um, is amazing because he doesn't really diversify. Like he's not doing a lot of what Devin and you're doing, Ryan, where it's like monologues and, and, and tracking through his own progress. Like largely his channel is not about himself at all. And he has to, he, he kind of has to, yeah, he has to travel to do it too. So like he has to commit large portions of his life to go and get his content or he has to do some stuff like in his, you know, whether it's a practice, but it's a hundred percent armor. But that, that, that's, and, that's, that's for instance where I can imagine, like, let's say Arm TV teamed up with Arm Wars and was the distributor of Arm Wars or something. For instance, like, like, like that's something right. that could happen that immediately bang, you've got a huge friggin' actual league going out to these million people. Mm -hmm. Right. I just gave him an idea. Well, he's not. No, but mate, I've got yeah. already. <laughs> I've got to be honest, already, already on that road, already on that road. Steps taken. Right. <coughs> right. right. So yeah, I think. It's, I, that's the sort of stuff I, I think always imagined Alex would do. A collab like that would be great with uh, Jeff Frank and, and TAL because it doesn't look like TAL is going anywhere. Uh, they got TAL three getting scheduled right now, and it's it's sounding to me like on like. In, in, in personal conversations, that Jeff Jeff Frank is 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 committed to step in and be the next league if there if there isn't 
you know, if there isn't one. And like, like Ray and I were talking before we went on air. Um, I got, I don't know how much the world knows, but we don't really have a nationals right now in the United States. So we're poised for another league mm. and, and mm. potentially a collaboration like that's a great idea, Ryan. Yeah. I'm still yeah. enormously hopeful that the WL comes back bigger and better. Me I too. mean, I'm hoping that the US can, can shake COVID just for that reason. We're in a situation now where it's actually spiking worse than it's ever done here in the UK. Mm-hmm. So we're in a uh, lockdown ultra. But you would hope that with the rollout of vaccines and things like that, that, that tide can go the other way. When we get sort of the summertime and the weather, uh, I mean, yeah. in England, we don't have no 40 degree weather. You know, that doesn't happen over here. But we do get better weather and that should make it a little bit better. So fingers and toes crossed that we can get back to some kind of normality because otherwise the world's a little bit of a depressing place. But yeah. if, the, if the virus did stick around for another year, I think we'll see an extremely different climate for arm wrestling generally. Worldwide, yeah. it's, it's, well, I, yeah. I know that I know that here in Australia, um, the, our federation and our, the major sponsor of our federation are really, really adapting well. They're they're looking at rather than being events based where where the, the where the sponsor got value from a crowd being there, they're looking at digital based value now, and they're and they're, they're investing in that. So we're going to mm. see a lot more micro events. Um, because they can't be affected by COVID as easily, and it's going to be digital production as opposed to to that. And and, and I just love that the sponsors are on board. And so <clears throat> I don't I don't want to step on Australian Arm Wrestling Federation's toes because the collaborations with me as well, and all these things will be announced properly. But I think Australia is going to be producing something in 2021 that you know how currently everyone's travelling to Dubai. There's a good mm-hmm. chance people start wanting to do it to. To Brisbane, Australia, not for, not as a joke, but as no, legit, no, legit, 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 because the money that's going to be on the table for these these things is going to be big enough that people are going to say, "Shit, I'm going there." Hey <laughs> <Eight> guys, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know I'm going to have I'm going to have some sort of top eight event in Brisbane at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mate, Brisbane's centre of man. <laughs> the, the Brisbane top eight. Yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love the whole concept. That, yeah, and those guys I, already, those eight guys already win, know they're in. Yeah, if, you, if, you win, if you win Igor's top eight, you get you qualify for the Brisbane. You qualify top eight. for the Brisbane top eight. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love the fact that we all live on one street. Awesome, isn't it? Who's hating my street? Can we them? That's the best thing of all the time. Now then, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Armathon. Some of the topics that came up in Armathon. And I had, uh, this is, this is awesome. This goes Ryan's way as well, mate. This is great mm-hmm. because we had, a, I had a, I had a bit of a conversation with Herman Stevens the second while I was on there. And there's some bad news for the, for the battleground event, I don't think we're going to get Herman for the battleground event. I don't think. Is, it, is that just because he just doesn't want to pull me? Is it that? Is it that well, much of an issue? It's not. It's not so much that. I think it's the way that you've gone about it. He's found disrespectful. So we know what you're trying to do. Obviously, you're trying to goad him into them, you're trying to talk him into the match. But yeah. Herman is like that. That tactic doesn't work with him at all. He's like, no. Nah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. He's, I think he's misreading it. I don't know. I don't know what he thinks I'm doing. I'm really not. I don't. Know. I mean, I just, I just see him as a guy that's above me in reputation and, and achievements, and I say I'd love a match. And just because I say I think I can beat this dude, I don't know. Whatever. If he doesn't want the match, he doesn't want the match. That's cool. I'll, 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 there's other ways past him. Well, he's not. Pa- this is what I was going to get to. No, maybe not past him. <clears throat> because the other day when I was speaking to him, he said, well, it's quite interesting. When a guy ever gets a win on me in a tournament, that spurs me on more to then want to pull him. So maybe that would be a route if you get doing any of the tour stuff you talked about, that if you guys, or not that there's probably going to be a lotty tour for a while, but, you know, if the lotty tour had gone ahead, yeah, he was in attendance, you were in attendance. I know that doesn't work out well because there's so many 
hurdles along the way. You know, you can be in the same class and never meet. It's, it's, it's weird. That, it, it, I, it's weird. Like, I actually genuinely really love and respect him as an arm wrestler. Uh, he, I think he's, yeah. he's one of the guys I really look up to because he's incredibly yeah, versatile. Trump. And, and, and I, I, write, I, write, I write, I'm a big fan. I try to emulate versatile arm wrestling. Um, and so he's one of the best. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you think I'm necessarily disrespecting him. Because I'm definitely, well, I'm definitely not. Yeah, I knew I didn't get to watch your 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 latest one with Herman, so I might have. I, I might be speaking the, out of the context. Third one's not out, mate. So the third one oh, okay. will come out. The third one will be out probably maybe over the weekend or just after. Okay. We, we got it in the can. I did it last night with Herman. Um, so that's coming out shortly, <clears throat> and we did speak about that. And we okay. it was a it's a follow on. Did you see the arm Arthon chat? That I, have I did not get that piece either with oh. with the, where Herman was on. That was well, Mosher was on there at the same time. So Dan mm. was on there, uh, myself, Dan, and Herman, and we were talking back and forth about that. And one of the questions that came in from somebody in the chat was around Ryan. And so I said, "Look, you know, do you think that'll happen?" And and uh, yeah, Herman was offended by. The fact that you tried to sort of embarrass him a little bit, I think, I think Ryan is the, probably the, the, the easiest way to say it. <laughs> felt like you'd be public about him wanting, swerving you or ducking you. And he obviously doesn't rise to that. I, you know, we, right. we joke back and forth about yeah. it on prior episodes of the fix. Mm. And I know so, the tactics is often to get a guy to the table by doing that sort of throw him into it. Again, I don't even know where, where that really comes from, but. Like the the context of that after pool, that one video that I have out of Herman was Herman actually asked me to the table. He he said, Ryan, Ryan, come it was he, he literally called me over the table and, and I, he watched me set the camera up and I'm like So I, I don't know. And he didn't he, he me on that day. That. Well, he spoke about, he spoke about that. He said that he felt sorry for you that you were sat down in the dumps in the in the stands and that he said, Come on mate, let's go and pull uh, and he didn't expect that you'd then sort of Show that in the light that you did. I mean, he was he he, he at no point was disrespectful. Of you, at no point was different disrespect. Or I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've got I've got Herman as a favourite, as you know. I think if you pull fit, you, you would have to prove to me that you can beat Herman. Yeah, yeah he's right. done more than I have. That we we that's that's clear. Yeah. Well, when we talk about Herman, I think I have a decent understanding of the guy, and he thinks much differently than a lot of people. And I share some, I share some sides with the the way he sees that he sees things. But if you really look at his his body of work in totality, whether he's fully trained up or not, he's always the guy who's chasing the next level. Like he doesn't do the small things. If he does a local, he pulls every class and he pulls the supers. If he takes a super match. It's with somebody who he's not the favorite. Like he pulls Todd Hutchings. He pulls Paul Passmore, who everybody thought Paul was going to, you know what I mean? Like he's not, he's largely focused the same way you are, Ryan. He just kind of goes about it differently. So I, yeah. I think like, like, like Neil said, if you wanted, if you wanted to get your hands on him, it would have, it would probably be easier to just go to a tournament where you know he's going to be in. Yeah, and then ask, <laughs> ask him to set you up first. <laughs> yeah, ask him to set you up first. Yeah, yeah, Mississippi State. I might turn up and just yeah, get get round one put against him or something like that. I, I, yeah. it's, it's weird. I actually, I actually don't really. I, I, there's a million people that I'd love a match with. Herman's one of them. It's, I, it's, I don't actually have a thing that I need or really want to pull him. I would love to pull him, but it's that it's yeah, it is what it is. If Herman came into the WAL, this is the other thing that I sort of said. Mm. Uh, well, I, so I said it slightly different way. <clears throat> I was saying. Who did they have as the, who did Herman and who did Dan have as the top five arm wrestlers in North America at their weight class right now? Paul was in that mix up. Chad was in that mix up. Um, Herman was in that mix up. Dan was in that mix up. And obviously Rob was number one <clears throat> in most people's minds. Now, quick question for you, Ryan. Okay. Mm. If you were going to pull Paul in the WAL, would you see yourself as the favourite in that match or the underdog in that match? Underdog against Paul, um, in my head. Okay. Ray, if Ryan was going to pull Paul, who would you have as the favourite and why and at what kind of level? Do you think it's really close, like a 45, 55 kind of deal or more a 70, 30 deal? What, what, what have you got that down on? I, I, would, I, would, I would, you know, it's always speculation. I would believe it's close. But I would put Paul as a favorite. Uh, okay. 
So both of you guys, Ryan and Ray, have got Paul as a favourite over Ryan if they were to meet in the WAL. Now, Paul, if you pulled Herman now, in a super Paul. match, <laughs> who would you have as favourite, you or Herman? I would best put Herman as a favourite. Him. I would put Herman as a favorite because because uh, I, I would be assuming I'm getting the best version of Herman that we rarely see. Um, and I know his technical prowess. I know his speed. Um, and if he's coming in at an optimal weight with his level of experience, I, I would put him as a favorite. But I, I don't think I would count myself completely out. I think I have lanes to, lanes to victory. Um, and, and if I'm coming in optimal, too, I think I can I think I can. I think I could give him a match, but I, I usually, I mean, if you ask me if I'm the favorite over Ryan, I would tell you, depends on what, you know, the, the court of public opinion might say I am, but I would convince myself that I'm the underdog mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I'll train that way. I, I say <laughs> That's Paul's where I want to be. For me, Paul's the favorite because Paul, you, you have a particular style that just, tr- I feel troubles me. Um, I, I feel I would have a better chance against uh, Herman than I would against you, honestly. I, like, just because the, of your stuff. Your particular set of strengths trouble me, in my opinion. Right. And that's really where it comes down. I mean, it's, it's high speed rock, paper, scissors, right? You know? Mm. But I, I think you get, a, I think Ryan gets a bum rap, um, in the United States. I think people are starting to finally warm up to his level. Um, but I think he gets a bum rap because of <laughs> things un, unrelated to arm wrestling. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but his le- his levels, yeah, yeah. His levels unquestionable. Uh, yeah, can can, can uh, Vlad the Destroyer beat Herman? The best of Herman. Mm, At what weight? Yeah, ninety kilos. Yeah, it's it's hard because Vlad would be eighty two in a form. Right. You know, it's anyway. like like I I, be- I believe Vlad can beat them all. I I don't believe like. Vlad has beaten, like, everyone in Latvia except Normans, you know? Can Hermans beat everyone in Latvia except Normans? I believe he had more people causing him trouble, like Sandris, Shedis, uh, Janis, the same. So I w- I'm always sticking with Vlad. I yeah. actually think the, be- the best of Herman cracks the shit out of Janis. That's my honest opinion. Uh, yeah, I, but I, again, there's, well, there's a huge, huge weight gap. Huge yeah. weight gap. Exactly. Huge Herman's, weight gap. Two more. Herman's <laughs> such, he, he's such an enigma, though. He carries around all this useless weight. And he'll tell you that. I mean, it's useless weight. Like, he, he's like 40 pounds of wasted weight, overweight. So that's like, spe- speculatively, if he got, if he really got motivated and got his body to its peak, um, at that 198 range or that 90 kilo range, that's like, I mean, when's the last time he's been there? It's been so long. Mate, I mean, I think the, the, the last time we saw, in my opinion, the last time we saw a half decent Herman, and I mean this with the greatest respect to Herman, I like Herman, he's a good dude. And I know he's not an immortal, but I think he's really, really good. But the last time I can remember seeing Herman where I thought he was there or thereabouts was probably 2015, 2014. Since then, right. I think he's, he's been all over the place. We've had di- various discussions about it. He's had a tremendous amount of um, distractions, never more so than now, my God, but also yeah, injuries, yeah. serious injuries that have plagued him. Um, but the fact that when he just resurfaces a little bit, his residual level is, is a so high, gives you a pretty solid indication of when he comes back firing on all cylinders, it's a bad mother flop, bro. Right, and you got to you got to think when when he's going into a super heavyweight class and he's heavily undersized in there, and he's still able to fire off and beat guys like Wayne Weathers. I mean, that's, that's what I was meaning to, with with the the Giannis reference. Giannis yeah. is iron, iron, but he's a small man. He's a yeah, fabulous yeah, yeah. small man. He's a small man. Herman is really really strong and has the ability to deal with giants. And Wayne Withers, you're talking about a man that that, that sides yeah. through Matt Mass. He's a bad man. He's a big, very big, very powerful man. And Herman can deal with him. When he's I running just, into I just, his... I just hope, I hope, yeah, I hope we see more of Herman. Well, no, matter, no matter where, I just hope we see more of Herman. He's been a one one year, one year, event per year kind of guy for as long as I've known him. Um, I'd like to see him... Injuries, injuries aside, I'd like to see him pull three events a year or something like that. I think that oh. we have... We need more data on Herman. Herman is arguably 
the flakiest, most difficult guy to judge of the semi-elite guys, or arguably elite guys, if you're a Herman lover like myself, or a Herman, uh, you know, you don't believe in Herman, depending on what's, what, what, what side of that argument you're on, you make one thing. In my opinion, one thing that is unarguable is it's very difficult to make that call accurately on Herman because of his lack of, you yeah. know, he's in it. He's not there, is he? But when he's there, I've seen the man when he's firing, and he impressed me greatly. Mm. Greatly. I think he's got real natural ability, superb, yeah. well-rounded, clever. Yeah. dude. Very, very smart lad. Yep. Knows how to pull. Got it joined up. Can do a lot of things well. Uh, yeah, he's a bad man. He comes ready. Who, I think who, he's who, a he's who a gen- wins, who wins out of Herman and Dan Moser fresh free fresh right now. I, I would think right now a lot of people would probably lean towards Moser. I would lean towards Herman. I think if Herman comes in ready over multiple rounds, not one round, because to get uh, an anger to, to, to stop the bullet once is more difficult to stop it if you got six shots. Yeah. Um, five. But if it was ah. multiple rounds, Herman, if it's one round, I've got down. Yeah, I know. I know Herman's really confident. We've kind of talked about that in the past. I think he might have. Uh, um, he might have the the setup figured out. And, he's got enough you know, shape. Op- he's got enough he, options in his shape. That he, yeah, and and they know each know. other. They know each other. You know, it's not like you know the first time you grab Dan is very weird. Like you know, yeah. Ryan, you know that the first yeah. time, and there's there is no time for pre setup adjustments. You got to come in with your move. And if you pick wrong, it'll make you look bad. But I think, uh, I think, and there's, there's a, there's a little weirdness like bad blood there too over some, some, I think some Louisiana background and everything like that. So I know Herman would probably be motivated for that match. You know, I'd love I, to see I, it. I would, I would, just random, random point. I would love to just have a training pool with Dan where I don't try to use anything but side pressure. I want to see if, if, if I just committed and went bang. Hit into side. How bad? How dangerous is Dan's raw side? Like, would I get steamrolled or would I be all right? I don't know. When you I'd say side pressure, out. when you say oh, side yeah. pressure, you you mean like like supinated or I'm, like? I'm just saying, don't, straight don't, side. Don't don't, don't, supinate, don't supinate. Don't supinate. Straight nothing. side. Just just go. Just do what Dan does against Dan, and just just see if 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 we stop in the middle. I don't know because I, I I actually think my sides are right if I commit to it, but. I've never committed to it on Dan. I'm just curious as to what would happen. <laughs> he 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 does it. He does it with drag and with pronation, though. A lot of times he beats people so quick be, because they're not engaged, and it looks like it's straight side. But there's rotational drag there too. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. feel like if you go at Dan, your the chances of you losing your hand or wrist are high. Mm-hmm. But you don't notice it because he usually pins so quick. And guys who aren't who aren't who are dead loading with him, that's when he'll go straight side. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he's certainly uh, he's he's very dialed into that move, yeah. and he's vex, vex, you know he's, he's he's extremely effective with it at the moment. He, yeah. I do feel sorry for Dan in some respects because it's like the hammer on the anvil, isn't it? I mean, he's he's yeah. he's not he's getting overlooked for super matches because he'd be right. about as entertaining as peeling grapes because his matches mm. last an eighth of a second. You know, so that puts an enormous amount of emphasis on the lad to then, okay, well, can you talk to the camera for a hell of a long period of time? Travis Bajan yeah. always had that risk about him. I mean, the difference yeah. in Travis Bajan was that if you point the camera at Travis, actually, yeah, he's entertaining as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's not really a problem. It doesn't make any difference whether his match is good or not, because there aren't many matches of Travis's that were real highlight reels. You know, there were the, the odd one. The famous Lucas stand up rich match, a couple of things, yeah. but most of the time, not not really the match that made the difference. It was the charisma I, I, of the match. Yeah. I'd like to see Dan pull the 95 kilos Lottie and qualify for the top top eight for, for this time, rather than the 86. I'd like to see him up against the Rustam Babayevs, and, and like that's the deep water that Dan needs. I think. Yeah, it is. Best. Yeah, but Dan and. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that. I think that's a cool idea too, Ryan. But like, I the Dan is not a large human being. You know what I mean? So it's it's one of those things where like, when when, you, when, when a guy like me, he's big or bigger than Rustam. Yeah, uh, height wise, height wise, yeah, you're right. Rustam, you're right. Rustam started at below 154, below 70 kilos, uh, and then you know became a ninja turtle. 
His back is massive. <laughs> but it literally, he literally, his back is just huge, you know. But yeah. he's very similar in terms of that size spectrum to 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 Dan. They're both, okay. you know. But I think you make a really good point, mate, with the bigger guys in there because most of the top eight lads, yeah, you know, they're they're the real deal. There's some big boys. Well, in there. isn't there talk of doing an 86 kilo um, top eight as well? Which he might be like unofficially slated for. No. Yeah. Yeah. I heard rumors of that. I mean, maybe a PAL. It, it, I don't know it, if they do it contracts was the plan. It was the plan. It was the plan. But, yeah. uh, you know, we need Zloty to us for it to happen, for them to have right. us. And, and they, they want to have, basically, uh, Igor's idea would be make something like UFC, you know, but tournament based, eight man each year and th- things like that, which is interesting, you know. But you have to get, like, the, the, his plan would be, like, one guy or two guys will go out and six will stay. I'm like, the same people will stay. Right. You, you need four four out or, or six yeah. out and, and make them, if, if they are the best six in the world, make them earn the chance to be there back, not just, you know, by, by them being there. So mm. the idea is good. And, and for 2020, 105 kilo was planned. And... Women's class, 57, I might, you know, it, it, but it was rumors, I talked with them, and, but as you know, nothing, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, isn't it, you, there's so much, uh, who would you, who would be in there? I mean, some of the guys that have, uh, everybody's transitioning across classes all the time, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, uh, Heracli yeah. is one guy that, you know, used to be 75 kilo, then he's 85 kilo, then 90 uh, even, yeah. even, even and like then you you see him the other day, and it's got you've got. Mindaugas is small though. But yeah, Mindaugas like seventy. Yeah, yeah. Mindaugas is, is the seventy kilo guy. He's like right there with Daniel and those guys. Um, but you saw the other day. I mean, they was a video the other day. Um, Mindaugas is seventy kilo. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.